Oh my god. I forgot to put the phone on front camera. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, I guess we'll deal with this for now. All right, so. So you got summoned for jury duty. Right now, you're probably wondering how or if you can get out of it. Maybe having zero idea what to expect and thinking that this is gonna be a huge inconvenience. But I'm here to tell you that yeah, well, yeah, it is. But if you watch this video and follow these tips and tricks that I've collected here, jury duty can actually be a really good opportunity to be super productive, be a great citizen, and just generally gain a lot of good knowledge. In short, here is everything you need to know in order to make jury duty something you're actually really grateful that you got summoned for. <laughs> I want to start with what to bring, okay? On the first day at the very least, when everybody's in the assembly room, you might end up having to sit in that room and wait to be picked or like called in, which I'll explain later, for up to eight hours, okay? Th I know, a lot of the people who were there yesterday when I went in were like, e you know, even like 30, 40, 50 year olds were like, I had no idea we'd be here for this long. And I was fortunate enough to have been tipped off about that, just like you guys are being right now. And so I came with a lot of good material to keep me occupied for eight hours. So what I recommend you bring to at least your first day of jury duty is snacks. Definitely bring snacks. They have vending machines usually, but that costs money. And if you have, you know, some crackers in your house, uh, chips or fruit or whatever, granola bars, you know, things. Okay, let me not shake the entire world granola bars or whatever you might have in your house. Honestly, bring that stuff. Be prepared because you will be sitting in that room for a long time and you get hungry um, very easily. They do let you out for lunch, so make sure you bring your wallet, money, cash, debit card, whatever, including your ID because you might need that for purposes of identification, paperwork, whatever, when you get there. Thirdly, bring a computer or, you know, a tablet, whatever you work on the most. I brought my computer and oh my goodness, I mean, I had to be there for the full eight hours the first day and I got so much done. A video I posted a little while ago, this one, I actually got done like just in the first half of that day and was able to post in that day like editing and stuff just because I had so much time sitting there at that table just working, sitting there waiting to be called. Um, so bring your computer, bring a tablet, bring your phone for sure, um, whatever you think you can be most productive on. On that same note, bring books that you want to read because you can't really use electronics when you get up into, when you get called up into the place where they start questioning people. I didn't actually get picked the first day to do that, so I don't know exactly what it's like up there, but I know that you can't use electronics in that room typically because sometimes they interfere with the court equipment. And so you might want to bring a book to read in that case because um, you have to turn your phone off and stuff and obviously computer and tablet would probably apply for the same reason. So have something, you know, paper wise that you can work on. Like if you have sheets of homework or something like that that you need to do. Or a journal, that's also something that some people might want to work in, like if you have to-do lists you like to work on or bullet journaling or whatever. Bring chargers for everything. Computer, tablet, phone, whatever you're gonna be bringing electronic wise, make sure you have chargers for that because again, you could be in there for up to eight hours and some things have really crappy battery life and you're gonna want to not, you know, have a dead phone on the way home just because you forgot your charger. Headphones, headphones, headphones. Make sure you bring headphones because you're in this big room, it's a lot of people. People are talking, sure, but no one wants to hear your YouTube video. No one wants to hear me editing like the same sound loops over and over and over as I'm trying to split clips and stuff. Nobody wants to hear what you're doing, so make sure you bring headphones for your computer and phone. Well, you know, only if your computer uses like different headphones like mine does. Bring water with a screw-on cap if you're one of those people who likes to always have water. I forgot a water bottle the first day and I was so pissed because I just kept having to go up to the water cooler and get little cups and that just gets annoying. So make sure you bring a water bottle with a screw-on cap. If you have like a 
Nalgene or something like that. That's probably fine plastic, but I don't recommend bringing a metal tumbler for coffee or water if you if you decide to bring coffee because you're most likely going to be searched and a lot of times they will consider like this hard metal tumbler to be like considered a weapon. So, you know, that's a give or take there. You might have to leave it outside of the front and that can be annoying. So just be safe. Bring like one of those plastic So ideally just be safe, bring like a plastic coffee cup, kind of like this, or like a plastic water bottle if you can. Because there's a lot of stuff that you probably should bring, a purse or a bag to keep your stuff in is also good. Don't like bring your loose computer and a book and a water bottle and your keys and your wallet and your, you know, headphones all like in your hands when you come in. Obviously put it in a bag. Bring a jacket because it can definitely get freezing in there. Everybody by the end was like, I need to go outside where it's like 80 degrees because they were like, I'm so freaking cold in here. Maybe bring a little pillow if you were like me and you accidentally got like three hours of sleep the night before. I definitely got so tired and I just wanted to rest my head for a second. I mean, I'm not kidding. I was waiting for so long. So like, I don't know, maybe I'd bring something like this small, smallish like pillow. I had a smaller one and I can't seem to find it. It's like a Georgia Tech pillow and it's like this big. So, you know, it really just depends on, on if you even have something like that, but it, it's an option that you might want. Ideally bring your car. So like ideally drive yourself there so that you can leave for lunch when they do let you out for lunch. Uh, like if you get dropped off, it's less likely that your, you know, your parents or your friend or whoever might want to wait for you to get out for lunch, etc. Which leads me into my next point, all about the summons notice. Now, so you got this in the mail, right? Make sure that you read this little piece of paper very carefully before your, you know, court date or whatever arrives. Um, I definitely made this mistake. I didn't read it at all. My dad told me it came in the mail and I was like, okay, cool. What day is it? What time? All right, cool. I didn't read it literally at all. So on the day of, I realized, holy crap, I have no idea where it is. I don't know what room it's in. I don't even know the exact time I'm supposed to be there. I have no idea what my juror number is. I don't know what any information I need to know before that is. And it turned out, you know, I had to like fill out this form beforehand and it was in a, in a different place than I thought it was gonna be. Like the courthouse was in a different place. Turns out I thought I had to be there like 15 minutes before I actually had to be there, which was not so bad of a thing because I definitely would have been late if I didn't think that. So it tells you, it tells you really important stuff like a, con uh, like a point of contact. And if you have to fill out any forms or paperwork beforehand, that can make the process a lot easier when you get there. So yes, make sure you read that summons notice carefully and also bring it to the court day because it has important information like your juror number, like what specific number you are in the line of the people who were called or for assembly. All right, what to expect? I'm not gonna tell you how the entire process goes because every single county uh, process is different, but almost everywhere you all sit in this assembly room, this large assembly room, um, where there's like, you know, between maybe 100 and 200 people there. There's probably about 200 people there. You all kind of arrive, everybody gets checked in, and then you have like an orientation for about like 30 to 45 minutes at the beginning. Then they do like a roll call and then they'll start calling you guys off to go like basically get questioned by the judge and by the attorneys to see if you are going to end up sitting on a case and that's when you get picked. You might end up sitting in that big assembly room with the 200 people for the entire eight hours that they do this process. And I had to do that on the first day. And that's why I'm so grateful that I did bring all this stuff, even though the guys at the front with, who were checking me kind of laughed at me. They are like, dang, are you moving in? And I was like, might as well be. You're keeping me here for eight hours. So, um, and I ended up having to do that. So it was perfect timing. But yeah, I think most of the time these, these jury summons last for about a week so the cases that you you might do one to three maybe four cases in the week and sometimes it'll be like one to two cases a day and oftentimes these are gonna be small uh, state cases or maybe civil cases so like fights between neighbors misdemeanors possession of marijuana under one ounce or DUIs things like that hopefully you don't get any criminal cases I don't know how the process works for that so I'm sorry if that does happen to you. 
like my sincere condolences because that can definitely be hard on a person but yeah you're probably just gonna get things like a person has a problem with a business or like misdemeanors or like whatever so small smaller stuff like that so here are my suggestions for conduct and kind of like typical conduct so it, it they, they give you this time mine was 8 15 a.m but don't stress like too much. Don't absolutely stress about the time. You need to be there on time because you don't want to be the person keeping up the whole thing. But people were definitely still trickling in 15 to 20 minutes later. And I was like, and they were like adults too. And I was like, okay, all right. So maybe it's a little less stress than I thought. It's not an AP exam or like a job interview. So um, they do start about 15 to 20 minutes late typically. So don't worry about that but try to get there on time and on that note i actually suggest getting there on time or at least actually early because you want enough time to find parking and to make sure that you know where to go uh because the courthouses can be different sometimes it can be a really complex building with a lot of floors you'd have to ask directions and you know it can be very stressful if you're like late already and you don't know where you're going um so make sure you have time to find parking plus you don't want to get like a really annoying like far away parking spot so it just helps to get there early or on time at least also you want to be there on time or early to get a decent seat in the assembly room i was lucky enough to find a seat with no one sitting directly next to me because i didn't really feel like socializing that day um and it was at a tabletop so that i could work on my computer and edit videos the whole time so that was really <laughs> lucky for me um but i also got there you know like five to ten minutes early so i don't know if that is related to that but make sure that you get there to find a good seat because you're gonna probably be there all day so like you don't want to just rush in and get like the worst seat ever next to the annoying guy on that point like when i was there there was this really really obnoxious dude behind me like two rows behind me and he was just talking literally the entire better part of about five out of the eight hours that we were all sitting there he was fortunately one of the last people in the room too so he just talked and talked and talked and talked and talked and i was like oh my god i'm so glad i have headphones and then it was funny because there was like this other guy like two rows in front of me who was also hearing the guy behind me and he was like he the, the guy in front was like getting really really annoyed about the guy in the back and he just kept turning around and like making comments and like talking crap about him and then I'm like okay now you're kind of becoming annoying because you just keep talking crap about this guy like that's not much better but whatever you might get sandwiched between two annoying old men but you also might not you might make a good friend and if you are looking to make friends that day maybe do sit by somebody that you think that might work out with I don't really know how it's gonna work for you in that way but it's something to think about maybe. Also just expect there to be a lot of people there and like if it's a small county especially, you might want to, you know, if you care about being presentable and stuff like that or like, oh my God, I don't wanna see people I know. Maybe you might wanna dress accordingly, but like if you don't care about that, then don't care about that. But speaking of dress, that leads me into my next point, what to wear. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Um, like it really doesn't matter at all what you wear. So I don't think you have to like show up in a pantsuit. It's completely up to you how you want to present. So like if you want to be super presentable, go on, like go off. <laughs> Sorry. Go full on, you know, GQ men if you want to, you know, just to meet that judge and those attorneys. But it's really up to you. It doesn't matter at all. But I would recommend bringing a jacket nonetheless and being semi comfortable because if it's like your most starchy jeans, you might hate sitting in them for eight hours. So I think you could probably kind of suss that out. Also, you will almost certainly be searched. So I just personally don't recommend wearing a belt or like any really like major metal items because it's gonna be annoying for you to have to take off that belt every single time you enter the building and leave the building. Um, you know, especially if you're like a somebody who has to go out to your car a lot or to the parking lot a lot for whatever reason, you're gonna have to take off your belt every single time. So that's just, you know, might not be worth it. So I just recommend wearing pants that don't fall down. <laughs> and finally, mindset. Um, jury duty has like a really bad rap. Everybody's like, oh my God, I got something for jury duty. Everybody hates that, it, that it's this obligation and you feel very distant from the issue. I just don't think it's worth resenting. Um, so on that note, don't resent the opportunity. Just go with it. Um, it's a civic duty. It's a right that you have, just like you have a right to free speech. You have a right to bear arms. You have a right to, you know, 
wow, I know my Bill of Rights really well. <laughs> um, you get the point. You, it's it's a civic right, and like, you can only hope that if you, you know, God forbid, if you were ever in that position where you needed a jury, you would hope that intelligent and you know good people like yourself would be sitting on that stand. So it's really a matter of you know, kind of thinking of it like that. Like you're serving your county, you are serving the court system, and you're serving these victims, so to speak, in a way that is priceless. So just take it as it is and make the best of it. Don't try your hardest to get out of it unless you like absolutely need to. Um, because again, not many people get called. There are people who are like 50 and stuff who still don't get called at that point. And so it's just kind of like, you have an opportunity why not make the best of it? So make your day super productive. I got so much done that day and I literally was getting paid to sit there and do nothing, like edit videos and stuff. And that was wonderful and I, I actually really relished it and now I get to go back in again and see if I have to serve and like sit on a case. So it's just, try to have a good mindset about it. Try to take it positively and your life will be better. You won't feel like you skipped out on something, plus you won't have wasted that time. And finally, other important questions and information, referencing back to something I just said, you will get paid as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> um, I've never heard of a jury not getting paid and I think that everywhere they pay you at least like a small stipend for each day that you come in. So for me, where I served, it was like, uh, $25 a day is every time you walk in the building it's $25 so regardless of if you're in there for like an hour and a half or if you're in there for the full eight hours you will get paid $25 which is more or less good but it really just covers gas to get there and back and also the lunch that you'll have when you go in your lunch break um, so like for for me today when I had to go in at 2 p.m. I wasn't gonna have a lunch break but I would still get paid $25 so it's kind of cool but yeah so that's all the information I have for you guys today. I still have more days to serve after this, so I'm going to keep, probably keep updating this video with a little bit more information after that. But this is mainly what I've gathered on this first day or two in, in the process. And like, I really hope it helps you guys. I hope you have a better experience than a lot of others do when they go in unprepared. But now you have all this information and I really recommend you follow it because, hey, Why not make it a better experience than it has to be, you know? So, yeah, we love a good civic duty. <laughs> um, I wanna say hallelujah for the justice system. Actually, I'm gonna take that back. Not so sure about that one yet. Hallelujah for my new setup. It's kind of cute. Um, and it matches my like new AVI pick, which I'm gonna put probably above my face right now because it probably looks better than my face looks right now. <laughs> and if you like this video, if you want more videos that use psychology research, entertainment, and happy vibes to enhance your human experience, subscribe to this channel, Hallie Speaks, because I'm going to keep giving you guys advice, tips, tricks, entertainment videos, whatever I can from my life and my knowledge and my way of being that can help you live a better, happier life. So. Yeah, go ahead and sub hit subscribe and like this video if it helped you and if you feel more prepared and less worried and nervous about this experience that you're about to do. And yeah, and leave a comment below about your jury experience. If you've ever had one or, you know, if you watch this video and then you're nervous, you know, how you're feeling about your jury experience, whatever, leave a comment. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hallelujah for um, five below where I got almost all of these decorations and hallelujah for you guys of course <laughs> thank you so much for watching and thank you for your service it's eight o'clock <laughs>